you know, I've I've already done all the big rapids and everything, and like, and it's just kind of fun to be relaxing and go fishing and check out all the, you know, like look in the caves or the mines and go look at the old uh, homesteads and stuff like that. It's just really cool and just knowing what's going on up there. It's really. You, and you, I, you know, I mean, I've been doing it up there for, I don't even know, like over 50 years, and I, I never get tired of it, you know, not at all, ever, you know. I mean. There's nothing better on a summer day than taking a jet boat ride up the canyon, and I'd be willing to bet that you couldn't throw a stone around here without hitting someone who's taken such a trip. Jet boats are an iconic feature of our valley, and there are few people who know as much about their history than Doug Riddle. Son of the pioneer of LCV jet boating, Norm Riddle, Doug shares how his family got into this water-propelled sport and how far jet boating has come in the last 50 years. From the first wood and fiberglass models to the aluminum fishing and sprint boats we know today, Doug walks us through the beginnings of Weldcraft to his newest family venture of Moto Jet. Stay tuned to find out more about this local, generational business. Hi, Doug. Thanks for coming in. We're really, uh, really uh, happy to have you here and learn more about jet boats and Riddle Marine and and just you as a person. Okay. Well, I guess you want to kind of the, some of the history of how it started and yeah, whatever? Yeah, absolutely. It started with your dad, right? Yeah. Norm, my dad. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, he we he ran a motorcycle shop in town and sold hondas and you know to everybody and he was like pretty innovative and he owned a had all kinds of things going on all the time and just a lot of fun and uh one day um one of our customers came along and you know and uh said uh hey i've got this boat let's go up into hell's canyon take our boys up there and we could put a couple hondas on the back right beside the motor cover and just head up into hell's canyon and do some hunting and hang out and do some stuff and my dad goes sure you know that sounds really great you know and uh so his this guy's name was chuck castle and he was from clarkston here had a marina down down on the snake river and uh so we you know planned this thing out and it's the first time my dad had ever been up the river first time i'd been up the river and uh and he has a, a son named doug also that was the same age as me and so it was kind of cool and uh so we threw these hondas in and it was like the boat we took out to head to hell's canyon this is this is probably 1965 or 66 or somewhere in there it was a fiberglass fiber form boat with the little hard top on it you could barely see out the windshield and had a <laughs> we had two hondas one on back on each side of the motor cover and and um, it had like a six cylinder inboard engine with a stern drive you know an inboard outboard on the back so you know we're heading out man it's time to go and you know we start i i, I don't even remember where we started because i'm just a kid you know and i'm just along for the ride and uh I'm sure probably in Lewiston and went all the way up and had extra gas and fuel and all that stuff and and made it, you know, like up the river and we just kept going and going and I mean, went past the Salmon River and we're just like, wow, this is so cool. I mean, it's just the first, it's the first time you've ever been out. My dad was pretty impressed. Then we went on past all the rapids and kept going and going and like finally got to where we were going to camp out and it was way up above pittsburgh landing which is like a lot of guys nowadays with their super jet boats will not even go that far and we were in a stern drive inboard outboard you know? <laughs> and it you know and uh, so camped out and it was a it was a 
some cabins and a camp there called uh, Willow Creek Campground. And, uh, and we just like started, you know, get out and, you know, started cooking dinner and did the whole stuff and went out on the, there's a big old beach out there and threw out a fishing line and caught a couple of big sturgeon, which was unbelievable. I'd never even seen one before. My dad was just freaking out. I mean, it was like really cool. <laughs> yeah, those and, things are crazy looking. Yeah. Especially and, if you've never seen one. And we stayed up there and had a great time. And then we decided we we're going to, you know, just kind of ride along the trails up in Hell's Canyon, which is really steep, straight up and down, just this little skinny trail along the river. And, you know, uh, it was, it was quite different, you know, but we didn't, you can't just, you just have to go along the trail and you look down and you see the boat going up the river. So they went up the river too. But we put in another, we probably went another 10 miles up past where we were camping out, put the the bikes on at Johnson's bar and and Chuck and his son drove up through you know some of the bigger stuff like Rush Creek and Water Spout Rapids and all the stuff that you know guys nowadays are just it's it's a challenge you know and I don't think we saw any deer or anything like that we're gonna try to shoot something but nothing happened in the hunting department so we came back and load the bike bikes back up into the boat went down to the camp again and spent the other night there and just like barbecued and had a great time and you know and headed back the next day it was just like man the perfect time and it was in like this time of year you know in november or something like that that's enough to get anybody hooked yeah and you know my dad <coughs> never you know we didn't i don't think we had a boat or never been into anything at all before like that and, and uh, i mean, I think he's done some rafting and stuff like that so we go you know i go back to school or whatever and he's got the honda shop and and uh, the next you know like within a week there's a big old boat sitting behind our shop out there upside down and he's refiberglassing <laughs> it and fixing her up and getting it stern drive inboard outboard six cylinder the exact same setup that he had that we went up the river in and it was pretty cool um i mean he was out there just working on it all the time he's done you know basically working at the honda shop you know it's like i'm i'm going to be a boat man now you know it's like in, in a week within a i think within a month or so we had this boat and we were out you know on the river and you know just fishing and doing whatnot and then finally decided to head up the river and he you know it's like i remember sitting in the back of the boat you know just kind of laying back there on some boxes i don't even know if we had seats in it or anything you know, it's like it's a pretty big boat and he's up i, I remember we pulled in somewhere up by the naha rapid and he's just a cussing up a storm you know with back there changing props every like he just can't believe it he's you know he got the realization that you got to drive, you know, you, that stern drive sits down there about two or three feet under the water, you know. So he's just got like 10 props in his boat and he's just changing them and trying to fit the one that makes it keep going, you know, it's hit so many times, you know. So, I mean, I think he went through a month or two or three of that kind of stuff. And then he decided there's got to be a better way, you know, this is, this is crazy. And he found himself a jet pump and you know they'd just been making them in new zealand and they were pretty new and and uh i don't know if he it wasn't a new zealand pump it was one made in america but he put it in and took his six cylinder out and put a 350 in there and then he get this boat going and it was like the most awesome boat it would go up the river anywhere anytime and it was just fantastic and he kind of you know made it made it easier for him to become a you know a good pilot and he ran the river a bit so you know for the next year or two i mean everybody knew and he'd work for the guides and do this and that and i don't think he ever came back to the motorcycle shop again <laughs> but anyway yeah, yeah that that chuck guy must have really known the river yeah to, to be able to drive that big prop boat well and that's there. what i was curious about was at that time did that many people run up into the canyon or was it still pretty rare it was rare there was there were some pretty decent boat drivers back in the you know in the 50s and the 60s that ran outboards and you know i got to know a few of them through the through the years and 
geez, most of them are gone now, but man, they could drive that river. And they just understood. I think, you know, like everybody, they probably had that learning curve of hitting a few rocks and then, you know, learning it. Changing but, some of their own props. <laughs> yep. But it was pretty cool until, you know, my dad started doing the jet and it was pretty cool. And then um, about that same time, see, he owned the motorcycle shop. So he kind of had this aluminum welding shop also that he built parts for motorcycle accessories and this and that. And uh, so I think he he got a job, kind of a, I don't know how it happened, but all of a sudden there was a place in town, I think Valley Boat, and it was, you know, it was a place that had been going for years and years, and it's closed up now. But uh, they were building two boats for the potlatch log drive, um, the Ponderosa and the Larch. And they needed somebody to do the welding to build the hulls. And my dad, you know, volunteered, I think, to do that. I don't know if he even got paid for doing it or whatever. But he welded up the Larch and the Ponderosa and put twin engine pumps in it and worked on those for quite a bit. And, you know, I think I'd stop down there and watch him work a little bit or whatever on them. And and uh, so that was kind of his first thing into aluminum boat building. You know, it was kind of roundabout way but he got to build a couple of boats yeah that aluminum would hold up a little better with those logs yeah and so (laughs) if you see some of the old pictures of the log drives there's there were some old wooden boats but the later stuff in the in the mid 60s i think had the aluminum boats and they're pretty utilitarian but they were pretty cool they worked really neat yeah so that was the first ones that he kind of were in on or was in on and uh, and then, you know, pretty soon he decided, you know, I could really, this isn't that hard. You know, he decided he could start building some boats, you know. And uh, I think it was, he, he started a little company and he started making a couple boats and doing this and that. But his first boat he actually made under his new company name was in 1968. And he called his company Weldcraft. Oh, okay. Wellcraft Custom Boats. So that's where Wellcraft started. And this is way back in 68, you know, that was, it was a sled looking boat with an outboard on it. And it went to a guide in Orfino. And it was pretty cool. And um, so were aluminum boats common at that time or were they kind of a new idea still? They're, they were pretty common. You could buy aluminum riveted boats, you know, like there was, three or four or five companies that would make aluminum riveted boats and they were kind of cool they were the old aircraft style companies that you know that in fact i think that's how they kind of got started as an aircraft company grumman maybe started or when it got slow for airplanes they built boats too and they riveted them all together and, hmm. it was, and that was pretty popular but um as far as i mean there had to have been somebody somewhere in the u.s that had built welded aluminum boats before but this, you know, out here, my dad was really the first one that did one. There was there was a couple of guys that had some jet boats that were running in Hell's Canyon that were really similar, but they were all made out of steel. And hmm. and I think he kind of looked on a little bit of that. And the, but he decided he was pretty he was a pretty crafty guy, so he kind of changed the design and changed the front and put a windshield on that to look pretty cool. And so the boat you see today that everybody makes is kind of just they're all spinoffs of what he first built you know and and you hear about a lot of other guys that have been in the business for a long time around here but nobody was before him you know it's like they're all kind of started up afterwards like everybody does you know sure uh, it's pretty cool well you said he ordered that first well he didn't order it from new zealand but the new zealand was pumping out those jet pumps right they were yeah do you know anything about the history of of jet boating at all sure yeah a little bit yeah. You know, the actually the jet boat was designed, you know, at first was built and designed in New Zealand, actually. The Hamilton, um, John Hamilton or Bill Hamilton were one of the first guys. And, of course, they had wooden boats, you know, and kind of like what my dad had, you know. And we're building, they just, they built all kinds of different jets of everything. And it was a pretty big thing de- over there in New Zealand. And there are, of course, a lot smaller boats than we use over here, little wooden or riveted or mostly fiberglass and wooden boats, you know. And uh, 
It was pretty cool because uh, I've talked to some guys, you know, I've been around a, a bit, and way back in the early days, Hamilton built these boats, or the, the boats and the pumps, and, you know, in the, geez, late, in the 50s and, you know, whatever. And in 1960, they put, like, four boats together and came over to the United States and ran the Colorado River from the start to the end, up and down, and nobody had ever done that before, you know. And so the guys from New Zealand were pretty cool. There was a couple of Americans in with it too. But um, so that was in 1960. And they, you know, there's a really cool old movie out that you just got to see. It'll blow your mind. I mean, it's the rapids are so huge. And, you know, it's, you know, way larger than what we have here, you know. And uh, so. What's that called? Do you remember? The Big Rapid. Oh, The Big Rapid. Oh, I mean, oh, the no, it's movie. called. Oh, the movie? It's, yeah. uh, geez, uh, geez, I can't remember. Uh, it's something to do with Hell's, or Grand Canyon. Um, I can, I can find that yeah, for you if fine. you want. It's pretty Something cool. about Grand Canyon and Grand we'll look it up. Yeah. yeah. We'll look yeah. it up. Hamilton. Bill Hamilton in yeah. New Zealand. Oh, I, I was I was really surprised to learn that. Brian and I were talking about that on the phone before we came to do the episode, and I was just like, there's no way they came up with the jet boat in New Zealand, especially not in the 50s. Like, I was saying, what, what have you ever heard of that was produced in New Zealand, mechanical-wise? I know. And I was just like, that is so weird, but uh -huh. well, I guess so. There's some really... they. There's some really smart people over there. Oh, and I wonder what the they're impetus so far was. away. Yeah, there's, there's, they have no big area, so they don't, right. they have to build everything themselves, you know. So it's kind of pretty cool. So did they, did they create that like, kind of for the same reasons we did, just for like Purely. outdoor rec, or was it like? Yep, outdoor recreation, fishing. You know, mm -hmm. New Zealand has abundant rivers everywhere, small rivers, but you know they're just every few miles, you know, and there's. And you couldn't just use any kind of boat on it, so it had to be a jet drive. Right. And, uh, yeah. That's also surprising to me to learn that so many of them in the early days were fiberglass. Yeah, big I time. Mean, that's, that's crazy because, you know, it's it's going to yeah. break if you bounce it off something pretty easily. Uh -huh. So you just had to be really careful or really good. Yeah. There. This Here's another part of the story that the New Zealanders in 1960 came to, um, since they were in... America, they went to San Francisco and they were at the this big boat show called the Cow Palace, you know, or whatever. And uh, and there's you know, they had their boats out there and they were showing them off at a boat show. And along comes come these guys that build irrigation pumps down there in uh, San Francisco area and they're going, Wow cool looking they just loved it and they go it, here if you just did this and this to your you know your pump it would be so much more efficient because you know we're engineers and we build these pumps and do this stuff and you know the new zealanders said hey you americans know nothing you know it's like and that really made the other guys mad <laughs> that's a good way to get someone to do something yeah cool. <laughs> so there's a, so they went back to their drawing board and built the guys were named berkeley berkeley jet and they built their own jet pump and put it on the market and kind of developed it and did it in the United States just in the, you know, just a few years after the, you know, in the early 70s is when it really got big going. And, you know, like in New Zealand, uh, in a really good year, they would sell 150 jet pumps or something like that. And it, like in 1974, Berkeley Pump sold like 200,000 in one year, you know? <laughs> so it's like they really, you know, kind of got back on them a little bit. But no but still the Hamilton was really the way that they were designed. They were a little more, you know, heavy duty and better use for the rough rivers and stuff like that. And now they're the number one biggest jet pump place in the world right now. So. <laughs> So, so how long did you guys operate under the name Weldcraft before it became Riddle Marine? Um, we oper I, you know, I my dad had ran it for ten years, and in 1978, I bought bought it from him. He had he actually had a rear, uh, guide service called Snake River Outfitters, and he had Weldcraft, and it just it was just too much for him. He just couldn't do it, so he had me 
you know, talked me into coming down and taking over by a pimp buying him out. And, you know, I could take my time to do that. So, so I did that in 78 and then in like 1990 or, you know, the end of 90, 91, I sold it to another company. And so whatever that was, it was, you know, 16 year, I don't know, whatever. That's how long we had Worldcraft. And so all the, you know, like the early, early stuff that my dad built were pretty utilitarian. He, like when he first started the company, he had orders like crazy, but it was all Idaho fishing game, Washington fishing game, the Forest Service, the, it was purely commercial people, you know, no recreational person. He really never thought of getting a big aluminum welded jet boat, you know. And then when I took it over, it was like, bam, all, you know, recreational. And everything was going recreational. You know, I put would put, like, these stripes down the sides and different colored seats and, you know, change the carpeting and put fancy stuff in it so the wives would like them too. And that's kind of, <laughs> we really got kind of going, you know, changed everything. And I changed the design of the bow and the windshield and this and that and redesigned and so did a lot of different things you know for the next few you know years or so and uh, and then you know at the same time there was other manufacturers starting in and you know it's and running a jet boat company it's a recreational company back in the you know 80s and 90s is pretty pretty crazy you know i mean you know times you know i think when i took over from my dad in 1978 you know trying to find get people to buy boats and finance them the interest rate standard interest rate for the day 19.9 percent wow <laughs> that's that's what you had to pay for anything you know you or you buy a house it was like 20 percent wow isn't that crazy that is crazy. you don't even know that nowadays yeah no you know, kidding but uh geez. <laughs> So so it was a little tough when we had some good times. And, so what know. other companies kind of sprang up around the valley as you guys started to take off? Um, yeah, the ones that I recall, you know, really the very first ones were like uh, Oaks Boats, uh, Bruce Oaks, and he built them in Moscow. And Duckworth Boats came out of, they were in Clarkson, Urasotin, and... Uh, and then Bent's boats came in, and then there was, you know, just there was probably, you know, even more, you know, four or five, and and people that worked for my dad or myself always spun off and made their Did own their boat own companies. Thing. So there was, I mean, at one time there probably was, you know, six or seven or eight boat companies going all the time. Maybe one would go out of business, another one start, and whatnot. And so that caused a lot of like competition and innovation afterwards, like at the early days of that when everybody was kind of doing their own thing. Yeah, a lot. You know, I mean, there was a lot of, you know, everybody's trying to do something a little bit different, and you know, and we'd have like a local boat show like up at the fair building every year, and it was really kind of cool because we would like all the jet boat people would get in there, or we go to Portland at the boat shows there or something and we'd really try to do some neat new stuff back in those days and you know and we were really on top of it i mean i was young i was a go-getter back now i'm just an old guy now but like <laughs> no i felt like you know it was you know it was just what i did and and you know so were most i mean obviously most of your boat sales were in the valley but did you ever sell them further away? Um, yeah, you know, we, I mean, we sold boats, you know, I mean, the Northwest is kind of the big thing because of rivers and whatnot. And, and in the later years, in the, you know, late eighties and nineties, I would sell, you know, a lot of Canadian boats and, and I, you know, I'd sold some boats to, you know, like probably a big one for me was like selling boats in Nepal, which is pretty cool. Oh, Back wow. in the mid eighties I had to got a got together with some guys that were trying to get something going for US aid and they flew me over to Nepal and I get to check out all the rivers and it was it was great stuff, you know. And uh 
and we didn't take a boat over at that time, but they put me in a helicopter and ran me on almost all the rivers and checked out to see if they were all navigable. And finally, we built a big boat and sent it over there. And uh, it, was, it was pretty awesome. And I had to find somebody to do the work. And I mean, I stayed in Nepal for a while, but it was it's a long ways away from here. You know, yeah. when you have a young family and uh, it's, it's like, yeah, clear on the other side of the world, you know, so... So how, did different. they send it in pieces, or did they no. send it in one one big boat? We put it in uh, on top of a flat deck and shipped it over there. And it took, <laughs> I, I bet it took a couple three months to get there. You know, and, wow, uh, yeah. So it was a it was pretty crazy. And so did you get to run the river there on that boat at all? Or? I didn't myself. No, mm -hmm. like, um, I, you know, I, they wanted me to come over and run it, and it was like. You come and we want you to stay for like a year, guaranteed. Oh, wow. And I'm like, uh, man, I got a business to run and all this stuff. So I found a guy from the Riggins area that was a guide over there, and he went over and stayed there for for a year or so. And <laughs> poor guy, you know. Like, yeah, you know, <laughs> it sounds terrible. <laughs> yeah, no, it wasn't bad, you know, but it was different in Nepal. I'll tell you, back in, but it was kind of cool back in the '80s, '85. You know, is when we we were over there and you know it was a different era because i've been kind of around the world in a bunch of places you know in the last few years and uh, in the 80s people loved americans i mean man it was like you you were a rock star if you're anywhere you went over there you know and i mean they just you had a crowd of people asking you questions or trying to you know do whatever and nowadays you go over there and they'd like you have to be, you know, kind of hide from people, you know, <laughs> but, uh, you know, like in different countries like that. And, but it was, it was pretty safe, pretty nice and completely different, you know, culture than we used to. So it was pretty neat. So have you done much traveling around for, for jet boats or just, uh, uh, uh for a, a hobby? A bit, you know, I mean, I've like a few years ago, I went and tried to sell some work boats. I got one sold in, in Papua New Guinea and that was quite a different area and you know working on there's a lot of oil going on there so and gas and we sold a, a pretty good sized boat to an oil company there and and i've been to i mean just you know like europe all over i went to a boat show a few years ago and in dusseldorf a couple times actually and sold some boats to russians over there and it was pretty cool and, um, geez, I mean, I've sold boats in Mexico and South America, um, of course, Canada, you know, all over London, England, lots of them to the film industry, you know, and did that too. Yeah, that's right. I guess we could talk about that yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Um, your James Bond jet boat. That was, uh, I forgot which movie that was, uh, Tomorrow Never Dies? Um, no, no, The World Is Not Enough. That's right, yeah, yeah. with uh, Pierce Brosnan. Mm -hmm. That was yeah. the first one. I did another one after that. Oh, too. you did more than one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Then we did, the, after that, we did uh, Quantum of Solace with Daniel Craig. Oh, yeah, cool. So, so how did cool. that all come about? How were you approached to, to do that? Um, well, it's actually, like, back, jeez, that was, like, Late nineties, whatever. I can't remember. We must have had the, the internet back then, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been around. Yeah. I think that they the guys was were looking and I was kinda into uh, these jet sprint boats. You right. Know, and it, I was racing It was a those. totally different style of boat. Yeah. It was like I was a, you know, we kinda got the jet sprint boating going myself and then a couple other guys in Lewis and Clarkston back in, you know, early, was it 90s? Yeah, somewhere in there. And, you know, I mean, that's another one of my things that I kind of got into really big time and for a few years and kind of, but I was building some hulls and making and doing that and building things for people. And, and, uh, so that's kind of the boat they were looking for. And they saw these, so they called, but they didn't have any numbers or any. You know, they just so they called whoever had a website from Lewiston, you know, and I think they called a couple of different boat places and they're going, nope, don't, you know, they, you know, people are afraid. They, it's like whatever. And finally they called 
they actually got a hold of Bint's boats, and Bint's go, oh yeah, we can we can build whatever you want, you know, for some movie. They didn't know we didn't know what movie it was at, at the time or anything like that or who, or whatever it was going to, and uh, and the day they go, okay, well, hey, we we really want to, we're serious, we're going to be there Friday, and this is like Tuesday or something like that. We're flying up from Florida. We're going to be there Friday, and you you get some boats together, show us what you got, and do all this stuff. And the guys at Bent's go, okay. And then he gets off the phone. He calls me up. Oh, my God, you got to help me. You know, like, <laughs> I don't know anything about these boats. You know, or get this stuff together. So I, we got all together and, and uh, put, you know, kind of put some videos together and got some boats on display for him. And they came to town, and, and of course we were just like it's a movie, you know, like could be some B movie, we don't know, you know, whatever it is. And uh, so they're going, hey, it looks good, you know. We're, and they were, they were kind of like speaking English, and I'm thinking, well, you're from England, then, right? Yep, we're from England, and you know, it's going to be a you know whatever, a movie, and we're talking about, you know, in England going down the Thames River, and you know, going in between those. You know, rowboats and kayakers and stuff like that. So, and I said, well, it'll should handle. It'll turn really sharp, you know, and do all this stuff. So they go, okay, let's go down to the river and see one go, you know, and all this stuff. So they follow us down, back the boats in the water, and they're in the car getting, you know, it's chilly. It's like I think it's October or something like that. So they putting on some warmer clothes or whatever, and they, you know, and I'm back in the boats in the water, and they come down. And they got like these fleeces on that say 007 over here and there and on the arms and stuff. And I'm like, is this a 007 movie? And they go, well, yeah. You know, oh, my gosh. You know? <laughs> and I go, no, so I didn't cool. know that. So, man, we worked extra hard to, to do whatever it took. And they, they were impressed and we one got of the, the job. One of the cool things that I saw was there's a part in the movie where he actually dives the boat under the water. Yeah. And straightens his tie, although uh-huh. that was CGI. Yeah. Um, but but that, was, that was really cool. But that, that's not an effect. The boat does go underwater for yeah, a short time. a bit. You know? just, and, just like a dip. And that was like, that was something. I went over there with the boats and stayed and did rehearsing with them and kind of taught the stunt guys to do it. And that's something that the stunt guys over there kind of devised themselves. They were, like, just playing around with the boats, and they would go along just as fast as it would go and then let off of the throttle, pull it in reverse, and just coast for a second, and then give her the throttle as hard as they would go, and it would just go right under the water. And it would come up sputtering all full of water. It was, like, about ready to sink, you know. Like, oh, this is fun! <laughs> you know, and, like... Hey, do you want to know how you can get the Old Spiral podcast uninterrupted? Check out our new Patreon account. From now on, you can get the same show you know and love without being interrupted by commercials. We would really appreciate the support, and if you would, head to patreon.com slash oldspiralpodcast. Now back to the show. Yeah, I read so, uh, I read an interview you did with the Tribune, and I guess those guys really pushed the boats to their limits. Oh yeah, they were tough, tough on them. They were always <laughs> doing something for me. So had those guys driven jet boats before, or was that their first experience uh, with them? I think it was their first experience. I mean, mm-hmm. they probably you know ran jet skis and stuff like that, but um, no, they're you know like I'm there to teach them how to do this and that. Well. It, I teach them for like five minutes, and <laughs> yeah, they're teaching me after that. You know, of course, right. they'll do anything. They're like paid guys to just, I mean, crazy, crazy stuff. Yeah, I mean, jumps and oh yeah, crazy maneuvers and mm-hmm. all that sort of stuff. Yeah, there's there's just so many stories about that film. It was just, you, I, you can't even believe all the different things that we that happened on that thing. I could talk about it for like two hours, you know, different <laughs> things, but. It was it was a man, just a great experience for me. What know. was what was one of the crazy things that happened? Oh gosh, uh, I mean, with the boats and stuff, basically, yeah. or whatever, I guess. I mean, oh, one of the big things is we were trying to come up with a way to make this boat do a barrel roll, so it would like hit a ramp, right, and go up in the air and flip and go clear one whole rotation and land and keep on going. Uh-huh. And uh, so we were going to we built this ramp and what we did we were on the, we were at this little lake south of London and 
this you know was pretty shallow lake and whatever so the ramp was on land so we would like be out in the lake and hit a ramp and land on land you know and see what would happen and uh so like their like cars and stuff whatever they were putting they laid a bunch of tires down and then put these uh boxes you know like just stacks of empty boxes like you know hundreds and hundreds of them like um you know four stacked high big boxes and with the and then it just when they the either you know the boat would come up and just land on it and just stop you know and whatever and they do it with cars too i guess so that was kind of their deal so had this all and you know it's just like in the you you watch on the you know the special effects shows whatever everything is all calculated out well it's not really calculated <laughs> this is the first one that we're going to try and then we'll calculate it after that so anyway like they we stacked the boxes back and said oh we should land right about here and set this ramp up and try to make you know just like a sideways thing so it would hit and turn over so it's so the guy we got everything set up and cameras ready and all this stuff and he the, the stunt guy gets way back there and comes running up at it and he hits the old ramp and it just goes and it it turned but it just landed upside down but it went clear over all the boxes and landed right Ooh, in the gravel oh, geez. i mean crazy and like the guys were just freaking out like and went over there and it never even i mean it put a couple little scratches on the roll bar never <laughs> dented anything or hurt anything <laughs> the guy was fine i mean like they were, it blew their minds it yeah i'm sure crazy. they were very impressed with that <laughs> just took a took a crane lifted it up put it back in the water and i think i know. uh that's crazy i think i heard you guys also got some uh, noise complaints oh yeah because <laughs> i mean it's right in the middle of the city right yeah like we were at you know the big bin and the parliament building is right there so we're rehearsing out there and doing some stuff and uh yeah, the mufflers were a bit loud. Actually, we didn't even really have much of a muffler on the back because <laughs> they wanted it to be loud, you know, to make this thing. Right. But pretty soon, we got it when we got back to the studio and had the boats in there. The guys are going, calling up, going, "We got to find some quieter mufflers," you know. The <laughs> parliament, you know, if we're going to be doing that again, we're going to have to quiet them down. So, but actually, I thought it sounded better once we put better mufflers on them. So it was mm. kind of fun. So how many boats did you actually end up making for the movie? For that one, um, <clears throat> we made fifth. What is it? Yeah, fifteen. Wow. Um, nine, nine actually weren't complete. They were just like the holes, the shells, and this and that. And six of them were running complete boats. You know that. You know, and uh, and how many did they trash? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you know all of those nine, and then most of the six are you know are I think they tore apart a couple of them, and I think for sure there's four that are still out you know around and you know the James Bond Museum has a couple of them in it and and there's a couple of guys that bought it, that got them that didn't have the outside fiberglass structures and they've been working on trying to get them fixed back up a little bit and you know and i have one of course and, <laughs> yeah. and uh doesn't shoot any uh, rocket launches or no, anything out it's, of it. it was the it was a stunt boat they had two of them that they put all of this the rocket launchers and all this stuff on it didn't really that there was two rocket launchers that actually shot the rockets out but air pressure they weren't didn't look very fast so or anything like that but uh then they had guns and flamethrowers and all kinds of <laughs> stuff on them it's pretty cool i guess one of my last questions on this is uh there's a whole section in that first movie where it goes on the street for a while right yeah they they took one of the boats the shells and put it fit it fit it on a like a three-wheel old car basically and it had Two wheels in the front, one in the back, I think, and it was just like driving around. It was pretty cool, you know. <laughs> I was like kind of wanting to drive it myself, but I never did. We never had a good parking lot that wasn't, you know, we were always full of stuff and whatnot. But it right. was, they used that, and it was pretty crazy. And then you had another one in Quantum Solace, right? That's yeah. kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Quantum Solace. Um, was that a pretty similar uh, production and everything? It was different. It was. Uh, it was filmed in Panama and oh, okay. on the Panama Canal, and uh, we built kind of larger boats, and they were open center console, 
and they were just kind of a fishing boat, basically. They were all aluminum, and uh, and they wanted them to look. They wanted them aluminum so they could be tough and they could do this stuff. But they tried to make them look like wood, so kind of painted them up and pound, just hit them with hammers and put dents all over in them and put wooden slats all over the floors and the console and and it was really and then you know and and uh, then you know like they thought they had everything figured out but you know and the boats were you know all set up basically and then and i wasn't really you know i wasn't really going to be part of that you know working on the film whatever i just built the boats and got them down to them and uh, then Pretty soon they call me like you gotta get here, man. We need you. you know, like you know, <laughs> so like I I finally flew down there and they brought me in and they wanted me to like change the console so like there's actually a little driver down underneath the console so James Bond could drive, fight and shoot and do this, but somebody else was driving the boat underneath, <laughs> and that was kind of cool. That was like. That took me a bit of time and working, and you know we changed everything up, and, and that was a lot of fun. Except for like I had to work 33 days straight without you know 12, 14 hours a day. Which oh wow, is a little bit crazy. That's a bit much. Yeah. Well, but, in Panama or was that up here? It was in Panama. Oh wow. Yeah, with kind of limited resources and whatnot, but uh, you know it was fun. What? And then during the filming, it was really great because like there's a couple of days we we're at the Panama, we would stay on this one side in Panama and then to film we would go across the Panama Canal which was kind of at the north end it was really wide and there's like guards or like tower on each end you know for the harbor masters to watch everything you know and and pretty you know like I would like Doug you need to get this boat over across you know over there because they're doing it you know or take somebody with you or do this or that or whatever like but i I'd, I'd have to run a boat back and forth a couple times and and uh, i would get down in the the hidden console thing and be going across and the guys like are freaking out at the harbor thing going there's a boat going across there and it's nobody's in it and it's just going like hell <laughs> you know like <laughs> from then on it was another one where Two people had to go. Somebody has to be standing up on the, the deck. You know, oh. like. <laughs> so it was kind of funny. That is pretty funny. Yeah. So um, you said you, you were the sprint boat guy, right? Like, did you, where'd you come up with the idea to make them? I guess just essentially well, smaller, right? Yeah. It was the sprint, jet sprints actually came. Another one came from the another thing that came from New Zealand and they, oh, okay. they started this racing around in a pond at New Zealand and Australia and on little courses and whatnot and uh, and it was just I really never it didn't really you know I mean you had to have a boat to really understand what it was like and I was racing and river racing up in Canada like I would do marathon racing also with jet boats back in the early days when I mean one it was like first ever stuff, you know. I mean, like back when racing was cool and it was fun, and we didn't go as fast as they do nowadays and all this stuff. And and uh, the guys from New Zealand showed up. I mean, there was people from every country that raced, you know. And they brought a one of those jet sprint boats with them just for fun, you know. And they let me drive it, and I'm like, holy! Cr this is the most funnest thing I've ever done, you know. So I had to, you know, like as soon as we got home, I maybe. It probably was a few months later, but had to build one of those things just for fun and to play with it. And, and then then another and another. And then finally, you know, everybody started putting something together and we had the jet sprint races. And, you know, hmm. and it, it got really kind of big for a while, you know, and we had some races in Clarkston over at the Swallow's Nest. And and uh, it was pretty, pretty awesome. But I just did that for a few years and then... Uh, Oh, and I was building some holes about the same time of the Bond stuff. And uh, I had this, there's a, another guy here from in town, Dean Lottenschlager. And he raced my boat for me. And he was winning everything here. I mean, it was crazy. And like, so, I mean, I raced it too. We kind of double teamed it. But he was so much faster. I said, nope, you drive it, you know. And so they had this World Series races from, they had a, 
the people, they had like three different big races, one in the U.S., one in Australia, and one in New Zealand. And we had to, you know, like sign up for this thing. And I, we got the boat put together and got it and sent. And we came here and they came here first, I think. And it was so great. I mean, all the Australian and New Zealanders, it was big time stuff. And, uh, and the Americans won, you know, the stuff here. And Dean won his race. And, and then, but, you know, those guys were right on our tail. I mean, they were fast. And so, like, man, Dean, you got to go to, you know, we let's pack that boat up and head it to Australia and New Zealand. So he goes over there. He ends up pulling off and winning the world championship with one <laughs> wow. of our boats, you know. And that, that's like the only time that's ever happened. And the New Zealanders would never let it happen again. They would do anything <laughs> to keep that from happening. But it was pretty cool. So huh. we did really well. And So is that style of boat kind of similar to what you guys produce now with the MotoJet stuff? It, it is similar, you know, in a way. Yeah. Now, now we have a new company called MotoJet. I sold – we – we did Riddle Marine, and then I've, you know, I decided it was time to retire, and uh, sold that to one of my good, you know, um, guys that work for me, and it's really good at doing whatever. And uh, Phil Stevens, and he's just doing a really great job over there. And then I felt kind of bad because my son and, you know, and kids, whatever, they should have maybe got part of something. But I said, well, we'll just start this little mini boat stuff, you know, because it's getting really popular. So I started a company called MotoJet and let, you know, and then I've been doing that for the last couple of years, but I'm kind of like getting out of it right now. And Patrick, my son, and Kelly, my daughter, and Sean, nephew, they're all in there just going like crazy, building up, doing really well there. And uh, the boats are similar to the sprint boats, but they're actually even smaller and they run like jet ski motors and stuff like that. And more just for fun and playing, you know, not competition, racy stuff or anything like that, you know. But. One thing that I find really cool about your company is not only that it's a local company from people that have been here for a long time or at least around this area, is, but also that it's kind of got this family tradition behind it. You got it from your dad and you got to work with your family. So I, I think that's just really exciting for a local business. Yeah, it has been, you know, kind of a started out a few, it's gone a few generations, you know, from my dad to me to my son and daughters. And, you know, but, you know, through all this, I, I got to tell you that I probably, you never know, but I probably wouldn't have made it as far as I did without the, you know, without the help of my partner, my wife, Mary Lou, and she's, she was great. She was with me from the beginning. Um, boat competition, building boats, traveling to Europe and all the other countries in the world, and and uh, you know, it, and usually she would you know come with me or she'd be stay staying home running the business. You know, so I I gotta give her a lot of credit in this too. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, you definitely want to give the wife credit. And uh, um, so, what did what was her role in the business? And, um, you know, it was maybe through support and and actually working too. Yeah, she's she's always been in the business. One of she's always done the books, done the bookkeeping. She always takes care, of, handles the money, and makes sure the bills are paid, and does everything to kind of let me just be footloose and fancy free you know (laughs) but boy yeah she does she does it all that's pretty good that is great and then now you know so you went your dad and you and your wife and now your your kids are kind of running things and yep yeah my kids and their wives and husbands and i mean it's just like it's really a big family thing going on right and your son pat riddle i think we talked about it earlier i kind of grew up we went to schools he was a year ahead of me and um i know him a little bit and that's pretty fun and it's fun to watch him and see the pictures and 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 the stuff that he's doing on facebook i'll I'll see some of his boats and him out on the water and that's pretty cool oh yeah i'm really proud of him he's just a you know, a good personality and he'll choose that guy, that kid will do anything in a boat. It's like, he's a crazy man. Yeah. And your daughter also is working there, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
my daughter Kelly, and she does a good job. And you know, it's yeah. So we're all, you know, trying to make a big thing out of it and have fun and just make a living. Cool. Well, that's great. Uh, it's it's awesome to see family owned and operated businesses, especially as long as yours have been running in the valley. Yeah, yeah. I watched Pat run one of those up a Soton Creek. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. That's yeah. That was an intense little run, you know. And there's mm-hmm. been doing some stuff. We used to do, you know, like that. That is a thought, you know. We were like when we first started building moto jets. We're like out running them, do, going everywhere and doing stuff. Now it seems like all we ever do is build them. You know, we need to get back out and have some more fun because it's like it's really taken off and people are buying them like crazy. So is that again something that's being sold kind of more locally, or is that something that's you yeah. guys are selling all over the place? That that's something that's getting sold everywhere. Not like probably the Northwest is a little bit, but I mean we sell. I mean. To Alabama, Arkansas, New Jersey, I mean, West Virginia, I mean, just everywhere. Like, I mean, probably more of them east of the Mississippi than we do west of the Mississippi. It's pretty crazy. Kentucky, you know, like just, it's just crazy. Everything is going, or we're shipping and sending them out all over the place. Is it probably a lot easier to ship than a full size jet boat? Oh yeah, too? yeah. <laughs> you can take, you can put two of them on a trailer and get them out there. You yeah, know? and uh, I don't know. Are those generally two seaters. Pretty much. the The first one started out two seaters. Now we've kind of upped and built some bigger boats, and you know, a lot of people have more than two people they want to take out. So we have two two seaters are our biggest seller, and then we have now the Ones that hold like two people in the front and three across the back, so you know five person for the you know the next couple sizes up. It's like a convertible hot rod, but for the river. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool. So, what are the sizes of those generally? Um, our smallest one is eleven and a half foot. Oh and, wow! And then fourteen foot is fourteen and a half. Actually, is our probably right now is beca- becoming our most biggest seller because it holds more people and then we have a 16 and a half foot so we just make the three different sizes and we'll make some sizes in between once in a while custom but you know so our biggest boat is 16 and a half and so we're trying to stay keep it in the smaller area and whatnot so it works out pretty good yeah very cool so um that's something that pat runs now right yeah Mm -hmm. mostly yeah, that's cool. I I, uh, I used to hang out with Pat in high school and, and whatnot. Uh, yeah. So, hey, Pat, if you're listening. <laughs> I'm sure he will be, you know. But, uh, yeah, Pat and, yeah, nephew Sean, really good. You know, it's and my daughter, Kelly. So there's a lot of riddles for the park in there, you know. Good. Well, yeah. that's the that's the dream, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Keep it going. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you've been all over the world. You've probably been in a lot of rivers. Um, how do they compare to what we've got around here? Um, you know, there, there's, you know, this is really pretty cool. It's a little. These are larger rivers. You know, kind of. You know, they don't seem large probably to you guys, but you know, compared to some of the stuff, like, you know, New Zealand and you know, actually even back east and you know wherever everybody's buying all these motor jet boats the rivers are really small you know like um the size of the grand ronde or something like that that's kind of a big river to them so but there's there's hundreds of these rivers all over the u.s that are are really too small to take a big jet boat up but man they people go crazy for the to be able to finally go on the rivers and it's pretty cool yeah yeah i'm sure Mm-hmm. Another thing I forgot to tell you, you know, it's like I guess I was on a TV show too. You know, oh, like, that's definitely something we wanted to ask you yeah, about. Yeah, I just remembered that too. Like, now yeah. that TV show was Junkyard Wars. I used to love Junkyard yeah, Wars when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. you were you did a few episodes, so didn't you? Just I just did just one. The one um, that my crew went on two or three more to to you know that you keep going as a challenge, but they they put a different expert in each one so they kind of build their own specialty oh. or whatever so i was just the 
the jet boat guy. You know, right. Well, how'd you one. get involved with that? Well, I think kind of the same thing. They just, you know, people calling up, asking, you know, different places, you know, like, um, you guys build jet boats. You want to, like, do this? And they're going, no, you know, like, <laughs> and they're going, who would do it? And they go, call Doug Riddle, you know, <laughs> and we'll do it, you know, whatever. And, you know, and, I, and I'd and i never even heard of it before. They're just telling me all the, how this thing works. I'm like, really? You know, and, and like, I ask, I tell somebody else about it, and I'm going, yeah, I'm, I'm in, you know, I'll do whatever, you know. But I tell somebody, and they go, what? You're in junk? That, everybody knew about it except for me, I guess. You know, it's like <laughs> pretty crazy. So was that after the James Bond movie? Yeah, it was. Okay. So that kind of made it kind of cool, too, you know, because they, you know, they could play on that a little bit. But, yeah, there was a episode where, you know, you have this big junkyard or whatever, and you have to go find your parts and pieces to make your whatever you're going to build. And I know the other guy that we we're that was the expert, he was an airboat guy, you know, from Florida or somewhere. And I was a jet boat guy from Idaho. And and my team was from Houston or whatever. And his team was from some, I think, actually, they were out, out west here somewhere. And uh, so we just had to, like... And, you know, I kind of, you know how movies are, or movies, TV shows, not really. I mean, they kind of, you know, months ahead, I had to give them a scenario of 10 different things that would make something that has to, they got to have there to make a jet boat or just anything or motors and this and that. And they, they would hide them or whatever, put them in there or, you know, you just pick what you want. And uh, so that's kind of how it happens because like for the other boat guys like they just happen to find an airplane with a prop on it you know it's like <laughs> you don't find those in the junkyard but you know like, right. but little no. tv magic yeah, uh -huh. yeah. but uh, um but it was it was cool it, it was that was probably the most work i've ever done you know i mean more than working at you know like at a studio, you know, like uh, on a movie set or whatever. I mean, yeah. seriously, they they go, okay, you're gonna have ten hours to do this. Everybody, give us your watch. You know, you, nobody can see what time it is or anything, and and so they have a clock going or something like that. They don't even really have a clock. I don't think they just keep. You have five hours left or something like that, and you know, like if you ever watch some of the movies, like or the shows like ours, it was like we start in the morning pretty early and it's like totally dark when we're done and it's in the summer. And so that's been about like 12 or 14 hours or whatever. Yeah. But man, we, oh geez, worked and finally got everything pretty much done. Not quite. And they like send everybody home for the night and they, they said, tomorrow morning we're going to go and race them or whatever. But actually... That's there's a couple days in between there. There's the weekend, you know. So <laughs> right. I'm like, awesome, because my family and we all went to California to watch and or whatever. And so I'm thinking, all right, you know, tomorrow we're gonna go to Disneyland or something. You know, it's gonna be great. <laughs> and like, and they're going, okay, everybody, you know, the teams, they can go have fun. Except Doug, you're staying here, and <laughs> oh. this other guy, you know, whatever. I'm like, what? No, I got to work another 12 or 14 hours, make safety day to make sure everything is uh, safe on this thing and work. I mean, it's like, oh my gosh, it was unbelievable. And like, <laughs> I was beat too, you know, like, but it ended up pretty fun. You know, our boat was by far the, the best, powerful and everything, but we broke a drive shaft on it and barely got it done in time. And, you know, like, huh. it took the other guys like, two and a half minutes to go around this course and it took and if my drive line wouldn't have broken the first time it would take me 23 seconds but, holy cow <laughs> so that's the next time, faster yeah <laughs> <laughs> so i kind of took it easy the next time i made it more fun and it took like a minute or something like that so the objective was you had to get stuff out of the junkyard create a boat that was better than your competitor yeah and, and we had to race each other on some course gotcha so, you know so it was kind of fun and yeah. The, yeah that was a really cool series i think that they just i oh. think they just ran out of things to 
do. You know, they they needed more imagination, I guess. You know? Yeah, because mm, that was on fun. on TLC. I think it was on for a long time. Yeah, it was yeah. a good. And it's I still really kind of like fun show, to yeah. go back and look at some of the old stuff. You know. Yeah. I look at myself and go, "Oh my god, how <laughs> stupid was I?" <laughs> Now that was a fun show. I used to watch that quite a bit. Yeah, I might have even seen the one you were on and just <laughs> Probably, didn't know yeah. it. Yeah, no, it was cool. Cool. And let me think. What else have I done? No. <laughs> yeah. uh, it sounds like you've done quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. With all the racing and the the movies and TV yeah. shows and um, man, the sprint boat sounds fun. I need to get out in one of those. It'll they're they are you know a real true life sprint boat will just man it'll blow your mind how much traction it has in a corner how fast it turns how it accelerates it's just being in it and it's just it's it it's hard to even explain how crazy it is and I mean but it's you know when you get in and you have a course it's a whole lot different you know it's it's and it's it's pretty fun. It's it was really one of the funnest things I've done, except for I just have to wait all day long sometimes for my next turn. You know, like God, I always want to go. You know, and you know, yeah. So it all started with a trip on an outboard inboard outboard prop, you know, fiberglass yeah. boat way back in the day, and yeah, and I mean, there's. I mean, I, I couldn't even remember half of the things, the things that, um, you know, and, you know, it turned my dad into a boating guy completely. He, in fact, in his, you know, in 1970, he built a lodge in Hell's Canyon, and it's still up there today, a really nice big lodge, and took people up, and he took, you know, all kinds of, you know, uh, celebrities and whatnot up the river. It was kind of cool. That's right, because you said he had a guide service as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you bought the company, did he continue doing that guide service? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He okay. did. He he did that until geez, almost almost two thousand nineteen ninety eight, I think, or something like that. Is when he might have quit, you know, or something like that. So he was doing it late into his, you know, and yeah, and it was kind of fun. So is he guiding like hunting trips or fishing trips or? Um. Yeah, mostly fishing. He really was into fishing, and he do a lot of. Uh, you know, chucker and bird hunting and whatnot mm -hmm. like that. Um, not really too much in the big game hunting. You know, it's more, you know, summertime stuff and take a lot of people just on tours. And but it was more of overnight stuff. You know, than just daily trips. You know, he wasn't. He hated the daily trip thing. You know, so and uh, yeah, and it was pretty cool. So if you're gonna go up river for the weekend, uh, wh what's your favorite place to go up there? Um, man, you know, like. It changes. Like, it used to be I would just get in my boat, I would haul it up to Heller Bar, put in, and just get to my dad's lodge, like, which is clear past Pittsburgh Landing, and then just run in the top upper end, run through the big rapids, you know, and run to the dam all the time and do, you know, it was just, like, crazy. And all the rest of the river, I just kind of, like, never really, I just kind of blew by that, you know, and didn't even think about it. And in the last few years, I mean, I'm enjoying looking at the rest of the river. I'm like, you know, I've I've already done all the big rapids and everything, and like, and it's just kind of fun to be relaxing and go fishing and check out all the, you know, like look in the caves or the mines and go look at the old uh, homesteads and stuff like that. It's just really cool and just knowing what's going on up there. It's really fun. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. The canyon is full of cool history. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, you and you, I don't, you know, I mean, I've been doing it up there for, I don't even know, like over 50 years, and I, I never get tired of it, you know, not at all, ever, you know, I mean, especially if I bring somebody with me that's never been there before, that's just my, the most fun ever, you know, I mean, it is, I would rather have somebody that's never been there because they're just like, Oh my God! You got to see this, and you know, like <laughs> pretend like it's the first time I saw it too. You know, it's pretty fun. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah. 
Well, thanks so much for coming in and talking with us today. I'm sure, sure. you have a whole lot more you could go yeah. go through with us. Maybe we'll just have to have you back someday. Sure. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. That'd really be appreciate awesome. it. Okay. Awesome. All right. Thanks for listening. This episode of the show is brought to you by our Patreon subscribers. Thank you so much to all of you for supporting the show. If you would like to become a Patreon subscriber, head over to patreon.com slash oldspiralpodcast. That's going to do it for this week, but the shows are not over. Get caught up on the backlog of episodes if you haven't already, and thanks for listening.